Hey, what's happening, guys? Today, I've got for you this really cool oscilloscope. It's from Finnissi, and it is the uh, Finnissi 1014D, <clears throat> and this is their first desktop oscilloscope. I've done a couple videos, and put a link to them, you can see there, with um, their little handheld scopes. And their tablet scope, I thought, was really cool. Now, this is a uh, 100 megahertz, two-channel, one giga sample per second desktop oscilloscope. Now, there's a hundred of these out there. So why is this one impressive? Well, mainly it's impressive for the price. This is for, costs about $150 US, which is about $100 cheaper than what I've recommended for the last couple years as a great beginner oscilloscope, the uh, Handtech uh, 5102P, which uh, goes anywhere from 230 to 260 depending on the time of the year that you buy one. So if this scope is any good, this might be a, a game changer. So we power it up there. And it's up and running in just a few seconds. Very cool. Now, they have cut a few corners here. You're going to notice there's no place to do a calibration on here to calibrate your um, your probes. Well, pardon my brain this morning. But there are other ways you can do it, so that's not so bad. Also, we're missing a lot of the buttons you would expect to see up here, like acquisition, uh, display, um, measure, all that kind of stuff. But it's all here. You know, it's, it's just all under uh, different places. So, let's uh, put a signal on this and see what she does. I've got a uh, 1 megahertz CAN oscillator here, which we'll use for our, whoops, pardon me, our signal source. Give out there. Nope. Let me change the camera here. Hang on. There you go. Now you can see better. So we'll hook up the CAN oscillator to 5 volts here. And we should get ourselves a signal. Are we getting a signal? There we go. So it's got an auto set button, which you're going to find in most of your scopes. And then you can hear the relay is bouncing when it does that. So I haven't touched anything other than the auto set. And you can see it comes up here. We have uh, peak to peak average frequency, uh, peak to peak volt average. That's channel one, channel two. Yeah, it's got a nice, nice crisp screen. Everything looks good. So what other functions do we have here? Well, Let's see, if we hit this button, whoops, that is our channel one probe. We have our coupling. We have uh, our FFT is on here as well. 10X, we want 10X. No, we want it. There we go. Then we have another channel one button, which simply turns it on and off. I knock my thing off again here. Come on. There we go. So, looks pretty good. We have the same controls for channel two. Then we have our horizontal control over here. We press that button and it just kind of switches things out like that. Now under our trigger, we have mode, normal, single, normal, single. We have our edge detect. And you can see right there, it's switching between falling and leading. Then we have our channel. We can switch our trigger from channel 1 to channel 2. I like that a lot. And then we have our 50% 50 on the trigger. And, of course, we can adjust the trigger manually as well. 
Now we have one of these, you know, multi-function buttons up here, and we'll get to that. And we also have this kind of little keypad over here. Now we have these buttons here, which allow us to select which measurement we would like to show in there. So channel one now, that's volts peak to peak. Let's see what else is available. So we can get uh, Vmax, Vmin, Vaverage, RMS, peak to peak, peak, uh, frequency, cycle, positive time, duty cycle, or no, positive time, negative time, duty cycle positive, and duty cycle negative. So that's how you decide which of those you want there. What it also has really cool is you can see over here we have S pick and S wave. So if I hit S pick, we've now saved it. And I can do the same thing with the wave. And it's uh, picked up the wave. So that is a very cool feature. So there's our wave. We just saved as both a picture and a, uh, a wave. If we come in here and hit menu, you can now see we have picture browsing. We can hit OK. And there are some pictures we've saved. We can come over, grab one of them, and it shows it to us, which is very cool. Now we can also... Oh, come back here, menu. We can do our wave browsing also. And there is our wave that we just saved. So, altogether, a very nice function to have in there. So, so far, I mean, you know, it's your basic uh, low cost entry level oscilloscope. And a, a good price, you know, at $150. But what makes it uh, even more interesting? Is that little blue button right there it says gen it's got a built-in signal generator look at that so we have a sine wave square wave triangle sawtooth sawtooth step half full those are rectifications exponential logarithmic Exp exponential dash logarithmic square roots are very cool here duty cycle frequency so let's uh yeah let's turn this on here let me take off the probe and the probes that come with this are UT PO4 uh, 100 megahertz 6 megahertz 600 volt probes. So, yeah, your standard probes, nothing special. Now, you see over here we have this green which says generator. So, we'll put a uh, BNC cable on here. Yes, I know it's not properly terminated. And look at that. We now have our step wave from the signal generator. And we can change. What are we changing here? I oh, guess yeah, frequency. There we go. Nope, two. I guess two megahertz is as high as it wants to go for that type of wave. All right, let's see here. Type. Let's go back to a square wave. Go any higher? Nope. So 2 megahertz, which is still pretty doggone cool. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. A nice function. That, I mean, yeah, that's, that, that is a great function to have in an oscilloscope at any price range, and it's pretty much unheard of in this price range. Let me show you what else makes this just such a cool scope. First of all, it doesn't weigh anything. Notice that. That is our power input for this scope. And that's not your regular IECC cable. That, my friends, goes to that car or a phone charger there. This thing runs on a 5-volt USB. 
So you know what that means, right? That means, as it stands now, it's isolated from our main supply, and we can plug it into a battery bank. There we go. And now we have 100% portable desktop quality mains separated 100 megahertz oscilloscope with a signal generator for 150 bucks. Wow. I'm impressed. That's that's just for that for that price. That's incredible. I mean, um the parts probably aren't as high quality as you're going to find in some of the other ones, but uh, you know, these days things are uh, made cheaper and that's just the way it is, I'm afraid. Unless you want to pay the big big money and get yourself, you know, a key sight or a Roden Schwartz or something like that. You buy the cheap Chinese scopes, you get uh, the cheap Chinese prices. But, you know, in my experience of running this channel over the last four years, the quality is not that bad at all. So I think what we should do next, and I think this video is long enough, so we'll, we'll do another video, is uh, open this thing up and see what it looks like inside. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to my friends at Finercy for sending this out. Big thanks to the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.